Hello, I'm Rob, and welcome to the 741 channel. Today, I'm going to be experimenting with and learning how to use my Xtool D1 laser engraver. So the goal of this video isn't necessarily to show you exactly how to use the machine, because I think some of these other YouTube channels have just done a great job with it. So what I think I'm going to do is just kind of walk through the process of me learning how to use this machine and getting familiar with it, so you guys can kind of see that angle. And with all that in mind, I just want to mention that this video is not intended to take the place of any kind of owner's manual or user's guide for this machine. So if you've got one of these, make sure that you follow all the manufacturer recommendations before using it. Additionally, safety is of course important with these laser machines. The first thing that you want to do is if you're working with one of these, is to make sure that you have some laser safety glasses to wear if you're going to be looking directly at the laser while it's cutting. Another important piece of safety equipment to have on hand with these machines is a fire extinguisher. Sometimes the material that you're working with can catch fire and you may need this thing in a pinch. So another safety item that I forgot to mention earlier is that as this machine runs it produces fumes and depending on what material you're working with those fumes can be toxic. So you want to make sure you're working in a well-ventilated room like I am or have an enclosure that you can use to draw the fumes out of the machine and out of the room that you're working in. The first thing I'm going to start experimenting with are ceramic tiles. I picked up a dozen or so at Home Depot the other day for like 16 cents a piece. So they're a good inexpensive object to kind of start with and get familiar with how the laser works. So I'm going to grab three of those tiles first. I'm going to coat them with different materials and then run a speed test on each one to try and determine the best settings for the laser and the best material that's going to work for me. I've got three tiles here that I'm going to test. I've cleaned each one with some isopropyl alcohol and now I'm going to coat each one with something different. This one is some flat white rust-oleum that I've had in my collection for a few years. This is some dry molly lube that I just picked up a few days ago from Amazon. And here is some flat black primer that I've also had in my garage for a little while. I'm going to label the back of each of these tiles so I don't lose track of which one is which later on. I'm going to start with the dry molly and I'm going to put a thin coat going horizontal and then vertical. Over at the computer, I'm going to fire up LaserBox Basic. So I went online and I found a test pattern that I was able to download. To import that into LaserBox Basic, I'm going to go to the menu button. I'm going to choose import and then I'm going to navigate to where I've got that stored and double click on the file to bring it in. You can see the image came in. It's a little bit off the canvas. So I'm going to click and drag it somewhere over here. So it's on the canvas. doesn't really matter where I can zoom in using the scroll wheel and then use the hand button to pan around on the screen. So you can see the way the test pattern is set up is that it's a matrix of squares varying from 10% in the bottom row up to 100% on the top row. And then starting at the left is the slowest speed at 18 millimeters per second, and then it goes up to 180 millimeters per second on the right. And in fact, if I choose one of these squares at random, you can see the settings over here on the right side of the screen the power is 80% and the speed is 36 millimeters per second. And you can see that each individual square is a different power and speed. So now I'll connect up to my machine. I'll go to the top right corner, choose the pull down. Now in my case, I'm working with my machine over the network. So I'm going to choose my IP address. If I had the machine plugged in with a USB cable, an entry would show up up here that I could click on. And now you can see the icon up here changed. Now before I send this over to the machine and start burning it, I just remembered I need to resize it so it'll fit on the tile. So what I'll do is select everything and then I can click and drag to make this smaller. Now I know my tiles are 108 millimeters square, so I'll size this accordingly. And you can see as I slide my cursor around, there is a size counter next to my cursor, so I'll know kind of where I'm at. The other thing I can do is come over here to the right side of the pane 
and I can enter in my size so that it's exactly what I want. Now that I've got that dialed in, I can push the start button to send it over to the machine. So in this window, there's a few options that I can play with. I can use these controls to move the laser head around if I want to. And over here is a preview of the image. And this blue dot right here is the origin from where it's going to start. Now I can actually change this by moving my cursor anywhere I want and clicking. But I'm going to go back over here to the top left corner and start from there. So now to verify that this image fits into the area that I want to image it on, in other words my tile, I can click the framing button and then watch the laser travel to see where everything is going to end up. That all looks pretty good, I'm happy with it, so now I can push start to send the file over to the machine. Now that the file is loaded up, I can push the button on the machine and let it start cutting. So here's a quick look at the finished results of the white tile. Now I'm going to go over to the other side of the room with some mineral spirits and wash off the excess paint from this tile. And while I do that, I'm going to load up the flat black tile and let that one run. Here's a close-up look at the tile with the white paint. I've got some mineral spirits on a rag, and let's wipe off the old paint. Now I've got a dry rag to wipe off the residue. So here's a look at the finished samples. Here's the one that I painted flat white. You can see that in the bottom right corner, most of the squares have been washed away. But up here we've got some pretty good definition. With this one here, 30% power and 18 millimeters per second being the darkest. This one over here is the one with the dry molly lube. And we've got some nice grayscale and gradient going here. And in fact, some of these squares have kind of a greenish goldish look, while other ones have a more silver look. And then a few are kind of a charcoal to almost black. So I think I can play with power and speed with the dry molly to kind of get different looks if I want to. The one up here on the top is the one that I painted flat black. And interestingly enough, we've got some pretty good gradients and grayscales going in here, but nothing that's quite as dark or black as what we found on the flat white. So now that I have some starting points for speed, power, and material, I think I'm gonna try and make up a few samples here. I think I'm gonna skip the flat black and work with just the flat white and the dry molly and see what I get. So now, let's take a look at my first batch of test tiles and see what they look like. The first tile that I experimented with was this one that had been coated in dry molly lube. I adjusted my settings so that I would get sort of a silvery finish, and that's what I ended up with. So I'm pretty happy with this one. The next one that I did was the one above it, and this one was coated with the flat white paint. Now the first time I ran this, I ran it way too light and nothing actually came out. But the second time I played with the settings a little more and I was able to get this nice and dark. So the next tile I tried was this one for my brother-in-law. Now this one, the logo was sort of multicolored, and I tried converting it to different grayscales and as you can see I dropped some of the lighter characters and images that were part of that logo. I tried again over here, well as you can see twice. <laughs> The first time came out a little better than this one after I adjusted the image a little bit and then I tried to play with the settings and run it again but I somehow lost my origin and double imaged it here. But when I did the second one I thought I had some pretty good settings so I ran it a third time and came up with this one and all the text came out this time but my logo was still 
a little bit messed up. This should be filled in and you should be able to see kind of the silhouette of a face here. Now in all fairness, this is sort of a tough logo for Grayscale. And I think what I need to do is put this through a little bit better of a photo editing program that I've been using so that I can play with the image a little bit better before trying this again. So next I decided to abandon this logo and just do the ARRL logo for my brother-in-law. I ran this tile which was coated with flat white and ran it a little bit too light again as you can see. Now this one came out okay, everything's visible here, but I ran it at a little bit too high of a speed so it's kind of faded a little bit. I also coated this one with lacquer hoping that the lacquer would darken up the characters but as you can see it really didn't do anything for it. So then I came over to this tile which had been coated with flat white. I used the same settings on this tile that I used on this one and was able to make this up for my brother-in-law. So after having success with these two tiles I figured I had some good settings for flat white. So I imported some of my 10 year old's artwork into Microsoft Paint and got it set up so that I could get it on the tile and here is the result. Now I'm reasonably happy with this one although there are a few spots in this image that should be a little bit lighter gray than the other blacks that are around here but again that has more to do with the image editing software that I'm using rather than Lightburn or the machine itself. That I put a piece of MDF under the machine and I did that for two reasons. The first is that the surface of my desk isn't as flat as it might seem in the camera. There's a lot of little marks here from where my soldering iron hit this anti-static mat over the years. Drips of glue, things like that. So in one case my tile wasn't sitting flat and that screwed up the image on the tile. So I brought in this piece of MDF to make sure that I was working on a flat surface. The other thing I was able to do with the MDF was to make an outline of a tile right in the wood itself so that I could place a tile in the same exact spot every time. That made setup a whole lot easier. So even though I had a few setbacks along the way, I learned a lot and had fun doing it. I've also made some notes for future projects, so make sure you stay tuned to see what I come up with. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to learn more about this Xtool laser machine or my channel, check the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.